Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, we are continuing with the our discussion on constitutive analysis. Okay. Today I am going to take one case study here. Okay. So, we have already discussed uh, how to develop constitutive equation and uh, what are the different constitutive equations for different uh, material processes. Uh, this case study is basically our own work okay, and uh, one particular thing we were trying to highlight okay, that is what is I am going to present here. Okay, so, this work is on actually on uh, zirconium niobium alloys. Okay. These are uh, some structural material for nuclear plants. Okay. So, zirconium niobium tubes are there uh, uh, in, the, in the nuclear power plants okay, where the fuel bundles are uh, kept. Okay. So, of course, if you want to know you can uh, look at it on the internet there is lot of literature available on uh, on zirconium niobium alloys. Okay. So, the processing of these alloys is one of the main uh, issue we were uh, trying to understand okay. and uh, there is one phase diagram is shown here uh, for zirconium niobium alloys. Okay. So, of course, niobium is increasing in weight percent in this direction and on the y axis you have temperature okay. and of course, it has two different phases. Okay. The alpha phase which is stable below 600 degrees Celsius okay, that is a, 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 a that has a HCP structure that means hexagonal, clo hexagonal close, close pack structure and the beta zirconium okay, which is stable at higher temperatures it has a, a body centered cubic BCC structure. Okay. So, there is of course, a phase transition and they, the two phases will be in equilibrium in in the temperature range and of course, this uh, temperature will change as a function of uh, percentage of niobium. Okay. So, the idea is that you have two phases in equilibrium uh, in, in the this particular temperature range from 600 to something uh, between 800 and so. Okay. And uh, usually the alloys which we studies, uh, studied are zirconium 2.5 niobium or zirconium 1 niobium. So, you can understand the complete transformation to beta phase will happen somewhere around 850 or so degree Celsius. Okay. So, uh, we studied the whole transformation range here okay, for de deformation behavior okay. and what we saw in the literature is that people are developing constitutive equations okay, without uh, taking into account different phases present at different temperature. Okay. So, for example, I can do uh, deformation at different temperatures here. Okay. All these what I am pointing are maybe let us say temperatures okay. and the constitutive equation will be developed for all the temperatures together okay, without uh, taking into account the different crystal structure present at different temperatures and that we feel is going to uh, put a uh, lot of error in the calculation because different phases behave in a different fashion okay their uh, dislocation uh, glide uh, phenomena uh, of course slip system will change okay diffusional values will change depending upon the phase the crystal structure which is there. Okay. So, we, we propose that you, we should develop constitutive equation based on the phases present. Okay. So, we should develop one constitutive equation for beta phase for example, one constitutive equation for alpha plus beta phase <laughs> two phase region and one constitutive equation for alpha phase. So, independent uh, phases. And uh, incidentally, the most of the processing which takes place for this particular alloys is in the two phase region. Okay. So, this region is important for processing. Okay. 
So, observations which we found out from the literature that the equation developed were for entire range of deformation temperature as I told you okay, which covers different phases. Of course, each phase has different deformation behavior. Uh, therefore, a single constitutive equation developed for entire range of deformation temperature may provide uh, erroneous results. So, when we develop this constitutive equation and then we will use it for some modeling, okay. so the modeling will be not be able to give you accurate uh, output okay. that is what we, we felt. Okay. So, what we provided as solution that constitutive equation should be developed uh, in, in uh, as a function of phase that means, different phase region should have different uh, different constitutive equation. Okay. Now, how, how to know that whether what we are doing is correct or not, okay. uh, that we try to validate it using some FEM simulation the constitutive equation developed through different for different phases. And uh, basically prediction of ram force for hot extrusion uh, was used as a, as a process to simulate. Okay, these constitutive equations were used there and we tried to simulate and try to compare the result with the actual data. Okay. So, that is how we were trying to validate whether what we are doing is correct or not. Okay, so, for example, first work which we did was on zirconium niobium copper alloy, okay, 0 0.5 percent copper is there, zirconium 2.5 niobium okay, and uh, these are called ZNC alloys also. Okay, these are all published literature. And uh, the deformation temperature which we uh, did for different phases, okay. so alpha plus beta was between 700 to 815 degrees Celsius, beta phase from 815 to 925. Okay. So, this, this is the one two phase region one constitutive equation. So, you can see all the parameters are there which we have already discussed when we were discussing how to develop constitutive equations. Okay, that how to get alpha parameter, how to get the stress exponent, how to get the activation energy and so on okay. and also the constant uh, A value here. Okay. So, one set of these parameter were developed for two phase region alpha plus beta, another set of these parameter were developed for single beta phase field okay. and one was developed for the entire temperature range. Okay. And the third calculation which we did, we also wanted to know when you are in two phase region okay, that which phase is dominating the deformation behavior, okay. whether alpha phase is the one which is deciding how uh, the flow stresses will be there or how the what will be the response of the material. Okay. So, the two phase region also we uh, try to divide into two phases that how independent phases will behave. Okay, and the activation energy for independent phases were, were uh, uh, calculated. Okay. The idea which we uh, used here, I okay, will just tell you uh, in the next slide maybe. So, what we found out is that activation energy of alpha phase okay, in two phase region is this, this is the calculated activation energy from the uh, data of alpha phase in the two phase region. I okay. will tell you how we did that. So, this was coming around 500 uh, kilo joule per mole, um, per mole okay. so q alpha c is for calculated. If it is experimental, we, we did not uh, put any uh, suffix here. And the experimented calculated activation energy in the two phase region was 524 kilo joule per mole. Okay. So, you can see these two values are very close to each other that means that the activation energy of deformation of alpha phase is very close to the activation energy for the deformation of which we found experimentally in two phase region. That means, the alpha phase is the dominant phase in the two phase region that, that is the one which decides that how the deformation is going to take place. Okay. So, one very important outcome of this uh, work was this that we were able to identify the phase which is the dominating the deformation process in the two phase region. 
Okay, so basically, uh, I was trying to tell you that how we found out this uh, data for the two phase region. So, I am just dividing different temperature regions. So, this is my temperature scale. Okay. So, suppose you have uh, let us say and flow stress data is here, okay, temperature is increasing here and flow stress data is like this and this is where you have alpha phase, this is where you have alpha plus beta and this is where I have beta phase. Okay. So, suppose flow stress is decreasing as a function of temperature obviously, okay, but their uh, slope may be different in different region. Okay. So, let us say you have something like this okay. and uh, so what we were uh, trying to do is we extrapolated the, the flow stress of alpha which we were calculating in lower temperature range into the two phase region okay. and to do that we used a simple uh, a logarithmic dependence of stress on the temperature okay, which you can easily get. Okay, that how the flow stress is dependent on temperature and there is a logarithmic dependence. Okay, so, that is extrapolated for let us say uh, of alpha into the two phase region. Similarly, for beta phase the flow stress was extrapolated in the lower temperature range. Okay. So, what we did for, for alpha we did for the higher temperature range and for beta lower temperature range. So, we could go into the two phase region. And then <coughs> we calculated the, the the values of all these parameters through this data. Okay, and to know that whether this data is correct or not, we also uh, found out the uh, the using a rule of mixture kind of idea that what will be the flow stress. Okay, if I combine the flow stress of alpha with the beta, whether I am able to get the flow stress of the actual experimental results okay, and which we found out is coming very close to the actual flow uh, stress results. That means, I could extrapolate it and if I combine both, I am able to get the uh, what we are getting through experimental uh, data, the flow stress in the two phase region. So, that is how we calculated the, uh, the activation energy for alpha and beta and we could show that uh, the alpha phase is the dominant phase. Okay. So, now we developed the constitutive equations obviously okay, and then we were trying to compare the experimental flow stress which are shown with, with this uh, data points okay, with the predicted flow stress which is shown by. So, constitutive equation can give you uh, uh, an equation which you can use to plot a line here for example. So, these are predicted peak flow stress from the See, this particular line is from the constitutive equation. So, this is a standard exercise people do after developing constitutive equation that whether using that constitutive equation I am able to predict the flow stress or not. Okay. And when I am predicting it whether these values are coming very close to the actual flow stress or not. Okay. So, uh, these were compared. Okay, so, the R square value is 0.97 in this case, the first case is where you we have taken alpha plus beta two phase re region, okay. 0 0.98 when we did for only the beta phase okay. and 0 0.96 when we use the whole range of the, the entire temperature range without looking at the flow stress data. Okay. And uh, 0 0.96 when individual phases in two phase region were used to find out the flow stress. Okay. And their uh, average absolute relative error is also calculated 5.7 percent, 4.3, 13.98, and 5.7. Okay. So, you can see that the error in the, uh, in the predicted and the experimental value is very high when we consider the whole temperature range. Okay. Whereas, when we developed the individual uh, constitutive equation for individual phase or phase region, okay, we our errors were very small. Okay. Similarly, when we did with the uh, data of uh, extrapolated values and uh, we then combined them together to get the uh, flow stress of or, or the activation energy of the uh, two phase region, okay, again the 
values were very small uh, or the error was small ok. So, this, uh, this kind of uh, told us that phase wise constitution is in good agreement with the data whereas, phase independent constitutive equation has more deviation from the uh, actual values ok. So, we should uh, when we are developing this constitutive equation we should take care of this phase information also. So, now this is one thing which uh, uh, this is another work which we did in zirconium 1 IBM alloys. So, earlier work was on zirconium 2.5 uh, niobium and 0.5 percent carbon ok. So, this is what uh, we were in this case also we did that ok. So, you have single phase from 650 to 750, single phase alpha, two phase region from 815 to 885, single phase beta 925 to 1050 ok and one constitutive equation was developed for all the phases considered together ok. So, you actually for each strain rate we deformed the material at different temperatures and these are the flow stress curves for uh, for the deformation process ok. Of course, you can see at lower temperature the deformation behavior is different than the deformation behavior at high temperature ok. It looks like a, as a single peak ok and then the steady state condition is being reached ok. So, it is like a dynamic recrystallization process ok, a discontinuous dynamic recrystallization and as you go toward higher temperature the deformation behavior is changing to kind of dynamic recovery where you do not get a, a, a peak in the stress ok, but there is a, a steady state behavior ok which is typical of dynamic recovery. So, you can also see that the deformation behavior is also. So, it can be understood that as the as a function of temperature the deformation behavior is changing. You can also argue that that the deformation behavior is changing as the phase uh, transfer or the phase uh, present at particular temperature is shifting from one type of phase to another type of phase ok. So, you can see the as you are going toward beta phase may be in the beta beta phase is the dynamic recovery is the dominant deformation mechanism and in the alpha phase the dynamic recrystallization is the dominant deformation mechanism ok. So, it can be argued that as a function of phase also this kind of change is taking place. Now, one thing this I was I just told you at that time, but uh, did not uh, uh, brought out ok and that was about the uh, adiabatic temperature rise ok. So, basically adiabatic temperature rise delta t can be given by an, a, a, an expression like this ok. So, eta is your fraction of deformation energy converted to heat ok, sigma is of course, flow stress epsilon the strain ok, rho is density of the material and Cp is the specific heat capacity ok. So, the delta sigma can be calculated from the uh, that what is the the slope of variation of stress as a function of temperature. So, d sigma by d dt and multiply by delta t. So, you can do a correction to the flow stress. So, this is my experimental flow stress and this is the change in the flow stress because of the uh, rise in the temperature during the deformation process ok. So, you have to do a correction for that. So, the flow stresses must have come down if there is any adiabatic heating because the temperature must be more ok. So, you have to do a correction for the temperature rise ok. That means, the flow stress what you have measured is actually lower ok, uh, uh, but the actual flow stress should have been higher for that temperature which you have considered ok. And you can see that is what is done here and especially at as I told you that at higher strain rates only this particular problem will occur ok, because strain rate is very high you are not giving enough time to for the heat to dissipate ok. So, you can see that this is my flow stress which is measured uh, experimentally, but as we are expecting that temperature of rise must have taken place. The flow stress for that temperature should be this one ok. Similarly, this is the uh, flow stress at a strain rate of 10 we have measured and this is what we have done the compensation 
for the temperature rise. So, now flow stress is more for that particular temperature. So, this kind of uh, correction uh, for, for temperature rise we should do for uh, deformation where we are doing deformation at higher strain rates. Okay. At lower strain rates as you can see we are not doing any uh, uh, any correction. Okay. So, usually above 1 uh, we uh, start putting the correction. Okay. Now, these are the material constants uh, which we have measured uh, using the uh, using the ideas there. Okay. So, you can see that we have developed all these alpha n and q and all these uh, parameters were measured for full temperature range here. Okay. So, this is my activation energy in this case this is for only the alpha phase and this is the activation energy two phase region alpha plus beta this is the activation energy and the beta phase for which the activation energy is this one. Okay. So, uh, independent constitutive equations are developed for different phases okay. and uh, now how to know that whether what we have developed okay, is, is uh, uh, accurate. Okay. So, actually these are the different constitutive equations. Okay. So, you have for uh, only the for all temperature range R square value is around 0.97. Okay. For alpha phase the R square value is 0.99, for two phase region again the R square value is 0.99 and for beta phase again the R square value is 0.99. So, you can uh, see that when we are developing the uh, constitutive equation for independent phases or phase region, okay, the, the R square value is quite high very close to 1. Okay. Whereas, when we are developing for the entire temperature range, so we are not uh, taking into account the uh, different phases present at different temperature, okay, the, the, the R square value is coming low. Okay. Now, how low is very low and how high is very high we, we cannot uh, sometime tell from these uh, values directly. Okay. A better uh, uh, approach as I told you is to validate this constitutive equation with, with the with the maybe actual experiments. Okay. And to do that we have done the FEM simulation of a hot extrusion process. Okay. So, as you can uh, may be knowing okay, if I look at the hot extrusion process. Okay. So, basically okay, I will do it like this. Okay, so, the billet will, will be put here okay, and it will be deformed okay, the cross sectional area will reduce. So, this is my output which I am going to get and this is my input okay. and of course, there will be a ram here to push it okay, push uh, through that okay, and uh, the material will come out and there will be deformation the cross sectional area is reducing and so on. Okay. So, what will be the ram force? will be required for deformation of this. Okay. This data was uh, acquired from actual shop floor okay, where a big billet is, is extruded okay, at, a, at a higher temperature and uh, you are deforming it. Okay. So, how much, how much ram force is required to do the deformation that already is uh, measured okay, in the actual shop floor. So, this process was simulated using finite element analysis okay and th these are the uh, grid which you you put on the on the billet okay for measurement of the uh, stresses and strain or during the deformation processes process and we have used the constitutive equation developed by us to do this simulation okay so and these are the properties used in fem software Okay, that what what material property you are giving uh, to FEM software, okay, and of course we are also using the constitutive equation that how the material behave during the deformation process. Okay, so the main input to the FEM uh, simulation was 
what we call as lookup table. So, lookup table means if we give the, the input as only the stress okay, as a function of strain, strain rate and temperature. Okay. So, one way to do is that you make a table okay, of so, your stress will come here and all other parameter will come here and you are giving these for different strain rate and temperature what is the values of stress. Okay. So, that is kind of a table and the software uh, has some uh, artificial neural network based model uh, within the software itself and the software which we used is called hyper extrude. Okay. It is a commercial software. So, the software also has some uh, NN model built in okay, as we have already discussed during constitutive equation that this is another approach to uh, develop, but in that case you do not know the, the and you do not understand the material behavior it, it does uh, within inside. Uh, so, either you can give lookup table like this that you have measured the flow stress at different strain strain rate temperature and that data you give to, to the software and it does the NN model and it develops a NN model and that he that the software uses for FEM simulation. Okay. Another approach is to develop the constitutive equation and then you feed that constitutive equation. So, you are not giving data per se, but you are giving the material constants okay. and the, then from constitutive equation material the, the software will be able to calculate the stress at different uh, strain strain rate and temperature. Okay. So, now the, the output of the FEM simulation will depend heavily on the accuracy of the uh, constant equation. So, they, that gives us confidence in that whether what we are developing or what we are doing or what we are proposing is uh, good enough or not. Okay. So, to do that we have uh, done the simulation. Okay. So, as you can see this red one which is showing this is the shop floor data okay? or shop floor measurement of ram force as a function of ram displacement. Okay? So, this is the actual measurement you of course, you know, they must have used some load cell or some transducers to measure the force. Okay? This green one LUT as I told you through lookup table. So, the software uses some ANN model here okay, and predicts the equation and using that one a, it tries to predict that what will be the REM force. So, as you can see it is also very closely following the actual shop floor data. Okay. The more or less the peak REM force and the steady state REM force are very close to the actual data. Okay. This is the equation because this particular deformation takes place in the in the two phase region. The temperature is uh, corresponding to two phase region. So, we gave the constitutive equation which we have developed for two phase region okay. and the, this blue one also you can see very closely following the shop floor data as well as what you get from the ANN model. Okay. And the, this yellow one here this is for the entire deformation temperature range the peak ram force and the steady state ram force are much lower than the actual uh, values okay or the or the uh, predicted values through to through the constitutive equation of two phase region and the lookup table okay so you can understand that what constitutive equation we were trying to develop it is able to uh, predict a very uh, close value to the actual shop floor data as well as what we have got from the ANN model. Okay. So, that gave, gave us the confidence that the, the idea which we are proposing it is able to predict the actual uh, or the constant equation which is we are developing is uh, more accurate than if we consider the whole temperature range where uh, different phases will be. Um, uh, dominating at different temperatures. Okay, so that is not a not a right way to develop the constitutive equations. Okay, so this is one of the case study uh, using constitutive analysis which we have done in our work, and this is actually uh, one of the PhD thesis work, uh, and the project was in, sponsored by BRNS. Okay, 
and it, the PhD thesis was from Kuldeep Saxena, he did all this work. I, I have not, uh, I should have mentioned the papers and all that here, I could not do that. Okay, but uh, anyway, you can go to uh, the reference can be give, uh, given in the next lectures. Okay, that which papers we are using for uh, presenting this particular uh, lecture. Okay, so with that, uh, I think the constitutive question uh, uh, development and analysis is uh, complete. Okay, and now we will go to the next uh, uh, module, which is on processing maps okay so that we will uh, try to understand okay thank you